Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I'm going to talk about all of the books that I read in the later half of April. If you have not watched my mid-month wrap-up yet, that's going to be linked down below where I talk about all the books that I read before April 15th. These are all the books that I read during and after April 15th. So let's get started. First, I have to mention, I read these two books during a reading vlog. It will be linked down below so you can know my thoughts and my readings about these two books down there. This is The Orc Mafia Boss or something? No, The Orc Boss. This is an Orc Mafia romance though. And Sweet Vengeance. Those two I read during that vlog. So if you want to know my thoughts for that, you can go check out that vlog. Next, I ended up reading Powerless by Elsie Silver. This was a buddy read with Rachel and Victoria. I'll link their channels both down below. I love them so much. So we were really wanting to read Powerless because we enjoyed Flawless and loved Heartless. So we were like, let's just all buddy read Powerless together. This is a friends to lovers romance. Sloan and Jasper have been friends for quite a few years. Jasper is very close to Sloane's cousins yeah cousins and they've always considered each other like their best friends they talk about everything together but then sloan gets engaged to a not so great guy and jasper's sitting there like why is she going to marry this horrible man something happens to where sloan becomes a runaway bride and jasper may or may not help her <laughs> become a runaway bride. There's also a little bit of a road trip element in here because Jasper also has to go to a few hockey games while Sloane is escaping her life, like running away from her life. And so they travel across other places in Canada because the series does take place in Canada, which very cool to me. So after her whole runaway situation and then traveling together, they're trying to sort out the mutual pining feelings they have towards one another that they've never really admitted. I thought this was a beautiful Friends to Lovers romance. I loved reading about Jasper and Sloan. And I am a big sucker for mutual pining and this book was like chocked full of it. I really enjoyed Jasper's character, but I did want to shake him at moments. Like, dude, go get your woman. Just dang the consequences, go get your woman. I also really love how we got to see like character growth with both of them. They grew as individual people and like as a couple, I thought their romance was just beautiful and I could not get enough of it. I did not love this one as much as Heartless so that's why it's going to be getting a four star from me. Like Heartless is just like top tier. There's a reason why it's top tier. And also in this book you got to have some side characters pop up from Elsie's other series and I was just like I want to read about these characters. I need to go back and read the Gold Rush Ranch series. I think that's the title of it. There's like a bunch of cameos in this book and I bet people who've read those books are like oh my gosh there's that person and I'm like I felt FOMO <laughs> reading this because I was like I should know these people, but I don't. So I need to go read the other books that Elsie's written. For trigger warnings in here, uh, trigger warning for parental abandonment. Jasper, when he was younger, was basically abandoned by his parents because of something that happened. And the Eaton family took him in with like open arms. Those are his brothers, despite not being related by blood. Like those are his brothers, like it doesn't matter. For tropes, you have childhood friends, a dancer, the heroine is a dancer. Friends to lovers, hockey, romance, sports, Pining, Road Trip, Runaway Bride, Small Town, and A Tatted Hero. I gave this book four out of five stars. I ended up reading two books a part of the same series. The first one is like a little prequel novella book before you get into the main duet. So I ended up picking up Dirty Filthy Rich Boys by Laurel and Page. So this is book number 0.5 in the Dirty Duet. I haven't finished the duet yet, so I don't know how the duet ends, um, but I know that this is like the prequel to it. So I started out with this one. This is a very interesting series. I can't really talk about it all that much because I feel like anything that I say could be spoilery, but the series starts out as a love triangle. Sabrina in here is a freshman in college. The prequel takes place in college and then the main book in the series and the duet jumps like 10 years maybe when they're older. Sabrina is our heroine, main heroine in here, and she has a huge crush on this guy in one of her college classes. He is like the big man on campus. His name's Weston. Like she has a huge crush on him. If she goes to college parties, Justin hopes like get glimpses of him. She's never talked to him before because she's too shy. Like she doesn't know what to do. So uh, Donovan in here, who just happens to live in the same frat house as uh, Weston and their friends, Weston and Donovan are friends. However, Donovan's a little older than Weston. He's actually the TA for the class that Weston and Sabrina are in. He notices that Sabrina is like totally entranced by Weston and is gonna kind of like play with her a little bit. And I'll just 
leave it there. This little duet is kind of like love triangle esque and yeah, this one takes place in college. I gave this one four stars. Heavy trigger warning here for attempted essay from like a side character to the heroine. So please be aware of that. Like attempted essay is on page. So just like be aware. Uh, tropes, college setting, love triangle. It's a novella and it's like student TA. So then I ended up reading book number one in an actual duet, which takes place years later, um, which is Dirty, Filthy, Rich Men. And I can't really talk about this book like at all because anything I can say could be spoiler. This is a workplace romance though now, years later. They haven't seen each other in years, so three of them. Um, except Weston and Donovan are like friends. They've been friends forever and they actually own a business together. This book gave me tones of like early 2000s angsty romance books. So just like it wasn't my favorite thing. I gave it 3.75 stars. I much preferred the prequel novella but I really hope to read the second book in the duet soon to figure out what is going on because this book series is like a lot going on. It's going a route I did not expect it to and I have no idea what's going to happen in book two. So <laughs> I uh, love Laura Lynn Page's duets. Like her duets are like killing it for me. I've read a few now and she's like a craftswoman at duets for me. Unfortunately, next I read a book I did not gear for. This is After All by Karina Halley. I did not care for this book, which is so disappointing because I love Karina Halley's books. But now that I think about it, there are a few books by Karina Halley I have also given a low rating to. Like I didn't enjoy the fourth book in the Nordic King, not Nordic King, like that whole series, the royalty series she's written. Like the last book of that series was a dud for me. The like, I think age gap romance that takes place before this one was a dud for me. So like, I think maybe her books are just like, sink or swim like I love them or I hate them so unfortunately this was one that I just did not care for our two main characters in here are Emma and Alyssa and they end up meeting at a mutual friend's wedding and they have a little hooky hookup in a closet and like someone takes a picture of them and it kind of gets in the tabloids and everyone's asking Emmett like who's this new girl blah 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 because Emmett's a famous actor and so they decide to like fake date uh, for like the public eye and they have their own respective reasons for fake dating each other. I didn't like either of these characters, especially Emmett. I did not care for him at all. I also don't care for the fame trope um, and I feel like this book perfectly models why I don't like the fame trope in books. This book was chock full of things I don't like in romance books. So you have like the fame trope, then you have ex or other girl drama, like that's the main conflict in the book is ex or other woman drama. Why? Why is that the conflict? I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like that is a cheap cop out. And also personal reasons, this book just did not vibe well with me with Alyssa because she has a mid-sized body. And as someone who is also mid-sized, there are points where like, my own personal journey with my mid-sized body. Like I like can handle a woman like being self-deprecating with her body in a romance book and like hating herself because of her weight. Like at points I can handle reading about that. I'm not at that point right now in my wavy, wavy life where I like feel comfortable reading about that. Like I did not want to read about this girl like being very insecure and hating herself. And it just like, I wanted to read about a confident woman, which I know isn't really realistic because there are points in my life where I don't like my body. I get that. But I felt like it was like constantly, constantly grilled into your brain in this book that Alyssa hated herself. And I was like, girl, I love parts of myself. Like you can love yourself too. Like, come on, you know? So I just was like, in my personal journey, I just felt like that was making me feel down about myself. So needless to say, I didn't really care for this book. Gave it two stars. We're moving on. Next, I ended up reading Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I wanted to pick up this book because I thought Emily McIntyre was going to Book Bonanza, but then I checked like the roster again the other day and I was like, oh, I guess she's not going. So I read this book kind of for nothing, but not for nothing because I really did enjoy this book. This is a Peter Pan retelling. I believe all the books in this series are kind of retellings of a sort. I know number two is like a Lion King retelling, which is very interesting to me because I don't think I've ever read a Lion King retelling. Anyway, Hooked. <laughs> Peter Pan retelling. It's kind of like villains getting with the main character, kind of like Wicked Villains, but not Wicked Villains. So uh, James in here is our Hook character. His nickname is Hook. James's whole life, he has been trying to reach this goal of killing and ruining the life of the man who killed his parents. So he finds the perfect revenge in the form of a young woman. Her name is Wendy and she may or may not be the daughter to the man who killed his parents, Peter. James thinks this is perfect when Wendy walks into his bar one day and he decides he's gonna make this woman his 
and just ruin her father's life. I honestly haven't read a dark romance in a while. This book isn't that dark. It does have its dark elements to it, but definitely not the darkest thing I've ever read. So like I was reading this and I was like, man, I forgot how much I love dark romance books. I do, I love reading them. I just haven't like gone back out there in a little bit. And I was like, you know what? I need to pick up more. Like this book totally got me in the mood for dark romance. I was captivated by this story, like everything going on in here with like James and Wendy and then the side characters and the whole plot itself. Like I was sucked in. The reason why this book is not getting a full five stars for me because I'm, I'm giving it four, the whole star taken away is I was missing the ultimate grovel. I felt like James, there, there's something that happens in the book. I don't want to spoil, obviously, but there's something that happens. And I was missing that ultimate, ultimate beg on your knees grovel scene. And I felt like it was a missed opportunity that it wasn't in the book. So that docked a whole star for me because I'm someone who needs a good grovel. I felt like we were cheated with that, but everything else I loved. Trigger warnings in here. There are a few. You have violence, breath play, murder, death, kidnapping, torture, assault, and child abuse uh, tropes. You have a captured captive, tortured hero, a dark romance. I hate everyone in the world but you. James definitely hates everyone in the world but Wendy. Like, oh my gosh. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a retelling, like a Peter Pan retelling. Um, you have a revenge plot line, a scarred character. Hook has scars all over his body from an accident. You read about it when you read the book. You have definite touch her and die vibes. And this is a romance where the villain is the hero. So I just adored this. I gave it four stars. Y'all, this next book <laughs> threw me for a loop. I decided to pick up What He Doesn't Know by Candy Steiner. Now, people are gonna be wondering, Avery, why did you pick up this book? You don't like love triangles. I don't, okay? But I feel like if anyone were to get me on a love triangle train, it would be Candy Steiner. So I decided to pick this one up. I was obsessed with this. <laughs> I could not put it down. It was full of angst and drama. Like I needed more. I'm patiently waiting for the next book to come in from Libby for me. Like I need it now. I'm currently in the middle of the novella-a-thon. That's another reason why I haven't picked it up yet. So I have to wait for the novella-a-thon to be over because I will just listen to this book all day instead of novellas. <laughs> so I, this is gonna be like the second book of the series. It's gonna be my like my first read of May. I can't really talk about this book because anything that I say could be a spoiler. I will just tell you, this is the love triangle romance between Charlie, her husband, Cameron, and uh, her first love, Reese. So Charlie is in a little bit of a rocky place with her marriage with Cameron. They have not had the best five years and I can't talk about why, <laughs> I don't wanna spoil anything, but they've not had the best five years. The school that Charlie works in, she's a kindergarten teacher, um, hires a new, I think music teacher. And it just happens to be Reese, who was like the first love of her life. So Charlie's life is definitely thrown for a loop when Reese enters the picture again and Reese wants Charlie more than anything. I could have put this book down. I was sneakily reading it at work. <laughs> like that's how much I was obsessed with. I sneakily read at work all the time, but like, I never sneakily read audiobooks because I'm always very paranoid that like, what if the Bluetooth cuts out or something and the audiobook just starts playing during a very unfortunate, like other people listening to you scene, you know? So I never really listen to audiobooks at work. I, I'll, I'll sneak a chapter or two on my phone when I have a break, but I never really listen to audiobooks. This one, I did that. I, I needed to know what's going on. One of the guys in here didn't really get a lot of chapters in his point of view, which I'm assuming he's getting a lot more in book two. So I can't wait to read more about him in book two. But like, I legitimately have no idea who she's gonna pick. You better not spoil me. Please do not. If you spoil me, we are never gonna be friends ever again. Like, no. I've been trying my dang hardest not to look at book three in the series and read the summary of book three, because apparently book three is about the guy she doesn't choose at the end of book two. And I'm trying with all of my might not to figure out who book three is about because I'm someone who does not care about spoilers. Like I'll go look up a spoiler all day long. Like, I don't care. Like I was that person who, when the Bachelor Bachelorette were airing, I just go look up like the rumors and the drama and everything about who ended up getting picked in the end because I just wanted to know. So like, I want to know this, but I feel like I'll have a better reading experience if I don't spoil myself. So I'm not going to, so please do not spoil me. Okay, so trigger warnings in this book, you have cheating, obviously. Uh, there is a discussion of stillbirth in here. So please be aware of that. Infant loss as well is a big trigger warning. Um, grief and pet death also. Uh, tropes, you have childhood friends, cheating, it's forbidden. There's a love triangle, marriage in trouble. And two of the characters out of the three are teachers. Uh, I gave this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. I can't wait to read the second one. It is currently April 30th, so it's the last day of April. 
Um, so I do have some time to read more books, but it's actually also in the middle of the novella -thon. Tomorrow, May 1st, is the last day of the novella -thon. So um, I have been reading novellas nonstop for the past few days, and I plan to do so for today and tomorrow. So um, I'll put some books on the screen. These are some of the books that I've read for the novella -thon because I don't know what else I'm going to finish tonight and uh, for May, but that'll be my May wrap up. Anyway, these are the books that I've read so far. Um, I'm not going to talk about them in this video. You can go check out my novella -thon, uh reading vlog that's going to be coming out in two days if you're watching this on the day this video comes out um, because I read a lot of novellas. So far I'm on my 10th book um, and it's like getting there with my like Goodreads goal. I've now reached the threshold of I've read 100 books so far this year because of the novella -thon. So thank you, novellas. <laughs> Absolutely love the novella -thon and love the lovely ladies that I co-host with. You have Tiffany, Samantha, and Rachel. We have been having a blast with this readathon. I can't wait to talk to them tonight because we have our last live show. I've been loving reading so many novellas. And yeah, you can go check out my reading vlog that's gonna be coming out very soon, if not already, if you're watching this days after this video comes out. Anyway, um, so I don't know how many books that I've read in April. I'll calculate that later. <laughs> but like right now, I have no idea because I'm going to be reading some more novellas today. So anyway, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. I would love to know. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a triangle emoji in the comment section down below. I think that's a shape, a triangle shape, anything with a triangle. Um, because I actually read a few books this month with love triangles in them. Like who am I? Like, I don't like love triangles, don't look at me. Like, come on. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.